back to any vlog. I'm not talking loud because of where I am. But I want to start this vlog with you and when I step out, I'm going to continue. Yeah, this is what happens when you live in a regional capital that's like a village. I'll brief you later. Okay, so back to what I was saying. When you live in a in a regional capital that behaves like a village mm -hmm. everything you have to run to Accra I've not been feeling well in the past three days so I went to the hospital this morning and I was given a test an examination to go and do I was given a test to go and run and fortunately for me the, that service, the whole of Koforidia, they don't have the service there. So I had to rush because of how I was feeling and the fear and everything that was going on in me. I couldn't have slept for today without coming to check. So I came to Accra and I am done. It's almost it's three, it's past three now. So I need to get some few things once I'm in Accra there I have come up and I'm up so I'm going to Mokola briefly to go and get whatever I want to get I have the I will talk to you later okay they ask me series of questions and then the the this is the radiologist she explained that she asked me whether I'm of I'm of late and I said which one is that me I don't know I don't know the truth is I don't even know my cycle. It just comes. I'm always ready for it. Mm -hmm. It comes and goes. Before even the scan, she said it could be ovulation. That is giving me that uncomfortable vibe. Nonetheless, I, I insisted she do the test. So I have the, the photograph here. And they are going to send me the soft copy, the interpretation of the results via my via email. And she said, she said that I look fine. There is nothing. There is no cause I'm for alarm. I am okay. So I should just relax. From what she saw, yes, I am okay. So and I, I, um, I was worried because this is the second time I had. A similar pain somewhere about two years ago uh -huh. so for it to have come back it was worrisome so I am glad that it's good I came it's not a thing it's, it's it's not cheap though but then once in a while mm, I buy food to eat so what I don't see why I cannot spend to investigate Mm -hmm. Over here, we are not so good with a um, um, checkup, regular routine checkups at hand. So, we treat you know, as one of those things the whole year. It's fine. It's fine. So, I am rushing to Mokola because I have to go back. You know me. I'm going back to that village today. So, I'll talk to you later. Are you wondering why the mate is still shouting Accra, Accra, whilst I am in Accra? Or do you wonder when people tell you, me Agamaba, I'm going to Accra, I'm going to Accra, though they reside in Accra? Let me tell you a brief story. I'll bring you the broader picture in a different video. From Jamestown to Buku to the post office area, the main, the general post office in Accra, that place is called British Accra. That is the center of Accra. I don't know whether this street still holds the title, the most expensive street in Ghana. It is called the Oxford Street. Guys, I first tasted fried rice from this restaurant. It's called Papaye back in the early 2000s 
and papaya was papaya when you get a fried rice from papaya even the chicken thighs they'll give you two big uh, i don't know i don't know but then papaya doesn't carry that vibe you go to papaya then you go to frankie's for your chilled and delicious ice cream walking through these streets again brings so much beautiful memories and from Osu, we are heading towards Accra, Accra, yes, proper Accra, British Accra, and this side is the Independence Square. So on the 6th of March every year, the president would come here to receive a selected group for a match past. This is where Nkrumah stood to declare that Ghana, our beloved country, is free forever. Are we really free forever? Nkrumah, come again. <laughs> The beautiful blue landmark you see behind it is the sea and it it's, again brings a memory. I remember when I was a deaconess in my church, we had a crusade here. So one Sabbath, the last Sabbath, we baptized the new convert in the sea and I enjoyed myself. At that Sabbath, I had, I had a good time in the sea. It was so sweet and soothing. So this is me in a bus. This bus appeared to have been the last bus in the station. Look at all the load I have behind me. I had no choice because like I have said earlier, it appears to have been the last bus. So I was even fortunate and I would have gone to Medina if not for the load I was carrying because if i should get to medina with the loads i have to get down by the roadside and then get someone to carry the things to the station the inconvenience and everything i had to come and the, the journey was about starting so i have to say a prayer this is the sankara or the akwaje interchange in accra and we have the netherlands embassy somewhere here From the Akweje interchange, we go to the most secured compound or building in Ghana, which is the seat of government, the Jubilee House. This is where the president resides and this is the office of the president, uh -huh. so it's called the seat of government. Then from there again, we go to the 37 military hospital. Those of you who live in Accra, come and tell me how you do it, guys. <laughs> we got here around 6 o'clock and I got to confirm that the journey that was supposed to have lasted for two hours maximum, it lasted for almost four hours because of traffic. Traffic. You see, I went to Takwade with my cousin's husband. He was my colleague. And so the first day he went to town, he was obviously driving. It took him more than, it took him less than 10 minutes to get to the market circle. So he called me in astonishment and said, Nana, me do o mi In the first time I also did say it was in a, a public a transport which was a taxi and i called him prince meduo because we were surprised that it could take one less than 10 minutes to get to the destination in another city in ghana by the message of god i am home look at the time it's 9 36 that's nature i was here yes morning i believe you are doing well i want to end the vlog but before i do i want to share one or two be with you lately i've realized that everybody is going through one thing or the other no work so to speak we are all going through life yes as adults or teenagers nonetheless let's make time to check on each other especially those who do not um who do not post who do not upload videos if you have a friend that you've not heard from for some time just check on them 
because that thing is very soothing yesterday throughout the journey yes i was chatting with Isi so she knew where i was what i was up to but my mom my parents they didn't know even a rama them i did not tell them because <laughs> those people even in the night when the child called and i was explaining things to her and she was apprehensive she was so scared so i did not tell them beforehand and then before the mammographer yeah the mammographer before she took her shot my phone rang and she said ah put it on silence let me be done before you answer the call i checked and it was my dad that call was so soothing though i did not tell him where i was but i was so calm and relaxed after speaking to him i don't know those of you who are parents i think you have this thing with your children whenever i'm going through something 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 i mean something something one of my parents will call sometimes the two of them will call simultaneously one will call then the other will call i'm checking on you guys these things they are priceless they are priceless let me let me be sincere with you because yesterday for instance i was so okay to have talked to ac i was so okay that my father called me then on my way home i spoke to my brother i told him he was so concerned later on in the night i spoke to Nesha. what i am saying this one i'm not rambling i'm not rambling i know i'm making a point and you get what i am saying sometimes when people check on you it's not that they want to be don't assume that they want to be nosy they want to know what's up with you if i check on you how are you i don't expect you to tell me i'm going through a i'm going through b you may share but then if not fine oh how are you it's been a while i'm just checking on you those things they 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 are nothing but they means a lot they means a lot this nigerian uh i think a uh, NJ sister Neka Neka Wogu. I don't know whether I'm covering that. She stresses on that a lot that we should check on people. You call, even if it's a WhatsApp call, one minute call, one thirty seconds call. Just check on people to know what's up with them. I am okay. I am okay. I look tired. I look tired because I've been tense. I've been tense yesterday after the the mammographer took the shots she said you are okay there's nothing wrong with you and even before the procedure she was explaining to me that it could be that I am ovulating and guys that is one thing about I don't know my ovulation period because I don't need it for anything as I sit here with you so that thing i expect it every now and then i'm almost ready every so i don't know that oh it's it will come today i meant it's supposed to come today and it did not come i don't have that time i will be checking i have the apps i have a calendar here i do take i do i'll do it this month next month the following month i will forget so that is how my cycle has been so she was explaining even the doctor said that it could be is it mal malani something something and i read about it sometimes uh, they say um, hey so until you see another video from me i pray that whenever you say a prayer you don't forget to say one for me and my subscribers and my household i'll see and i live with the peace and the message of the most high Peace. Oh yeah, say shalom and chop kiss. Mm -hmm.